What's going on everybody, Mike here. Welcome to another Symfony tutorial. In this video, we're going to talk about upgrading our POS system. Every now and then, you are going to encounter an upgrade. Upgrades happen because of additional features, security issues, or any other reasons. If you are self-hosting your POS system, then your IT department will let you know when they upgraded the database. If you are hosted by Oracle in the cloud, you will receive an email notifying you that your system has been upgraded to a newer version. So you're probably wondering, well, what version do I have right now? There's a very easy way to figure this out. What we can do is use a quick shortcut here. I'm going to press 9 three times. 1, 2, 3. And then the clear key also three times. 1, 2, 3. Pressing three nines and then three clears in sequence will bring up this information page on your main screen. The version at the top will be displayed. So my current version is version 2.9 and this, this 303 at the end means uh, major release 3. So my version is 2.9 major release 3. So I just received an email that my enterprise database have been upgraded to version 2.10.1. Now my workstations, as you saw, are still running version 29303. When you receive one of these update notifications, it means the enterprise database, meaning the server in the cloud that con EMC connects to, was upgraded. But that doesn't automatically also upgrade your workstations. This is a manual process that you or the IT team has to do. So let's take a look at how we do this. At the enterprise level, we're going to click on the Setup tab. And here under Hardware and Interfaces, we're going to find CAL packages. Now, CAL stands for Client Application Loader. It is the application that runs on the workstations that basically pushes information back and forth from the enterprise server to your workstations. Now, I'm not talking about database information such as menu items or prices. That is done by a different system. CAL usually pushes out files such as pre, uh, prereq files or actual service host files that you need to download. So here we have a list of all of these CAL packages that are available for you. And then we also have a couple of tabs here. Now, the tab that we're very interested in is this deployment schedule. If I click on my all uh, tab here and take a look at all the packages that I have deployed, I can see that I have Symfony KDS client in this particular version deployed to my property level. I have the KDS handler, uh, the service host prereq. Now, these can stay the same for now. W what we're interested in is are these two, the service host prerequisites and the service host itself. So the prerequisites need to in be installed first, and then we need to install uh, this particular service host. So as you can see, the version that I have deployed is this 2.9 MR3 Hotfix 3. Thus that 2.9.303, that's where it comes from. So what we need to do now is we need to figure out what are the newer version of the files that need to be deployed. So let's start with this one first. Service host prereq 2.9 MR3. So if we take a look in our list here, if we expand the service host prereq folder, we can see all of the versions that are available for us. So we have 2.9 and then 2.9MR3, and then 2.10, and then 2.10.1. So the one that I'm going to deploy is this one, 2.10.1, which is the latest version. So the first thing I want to do is I want to terminate this package first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight it, and then I'm going to click Delete Deployment. And that removed it. And then I'm going to add the deployment for this newer version, version 2.10.1. Okay? And I also want to delete this one, service host 29MR3 hotfix3, because if we expand our service host folder, we will find that our newest version is 2.10.1.5. Okay. So let's remove this one. And now we have the Symfony KDS client, and then the KDS handler, and also this X processor. This is the X processor is a custom package. You might not have this particular packet. You can ignore it for now. So let's take a look at our Symfony KDS client and the KDS handler. 
So if we go here to Symphony KDS client, we see that we have this one, new one, uh, Symphony KDS client 3.5.100. So we can deploy this one as well. And remove our deployment here. And also we'll take a look at our KDS handler. We also have a newer version for this one, 3.5.100. Okay. Now this next step is very important. What we're going to do is we're going to start adding these new packages and we're going to deploy them. Okay. The location where you deploy them is very important. Be very careful with this, especially if you have multiple properties and uh, you don't want to deploy it to the enterprise because the location that you deploy it after we hit save it will automatically start sending the packages to the workstations and that will cause a reboot of the workstations and the new software to get installed so when we deploy these packages we don't want to do it whilst the restaurant is open okay we want to do it when it's closed uh, either if you have a day where you're not open or at night after everything is closed and settled okay when we do a major upgrade like this i always recommend that you do a test upgrade on one of the workstations pick a workstation that is not very often in use try not to pick caps the check and posting workstation uh, because that one is going to be needed and it's very important pick one of the other workstations and send an upgrade for that one alone and then test all the systems on that particular workstation to make sure everything is still working. Newer versions can encounter issues with your credit card payment drivers, your gift card drivers, or any other interfaces that are not native to Symfony that you currently have. You might have custom programming, custom reports. There's a whole slew of items that might not work properly after an upgrade. So never do it on the entire property or we always do it on one workstation and then test everything out before you do it on everything. So let's take a look at adding our packages now. The first thing I'm gonna do is click here on add deployment. And from my list, I'm gonna select all the packages that I need. As you can see, I have three versions of this Cal client. I wanna pick the latest version that I have, which is Cal 142. And then for the deployment type, what I'm gonna do is I will select my property. If you want to test it out and only select one workstation, what you're going to do here from the drop down, you're going to say specific service host, click on the little dots and then select the service host that you want to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy everything to my dining one workstation just as a test. So I deployed my Cal client 142 and then I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click add deployment again. And then the next version, the next thing that I'm going to add is going to be my Symphony KDS client. So I'm going to go in the order here in the list. So I need this one, Symphony KDS client 3.5.100. So I'm going to look here in S. And this is my Symphony KDS client 3.5.100. And then I'm going to say again, I'm sending it to just one particular workstation. And I'm going to tell it I'm going to send it to workstation one and then click OK. So now I have my second package here with this one. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to change this one also just to that one workstation. Okay, so we have this and this. The next one that I want to send is going to be my KDS handler 3.5.100. So there it is. And I'm going to say specific service host and I'm going to send it to this one. Click OK. And the next thing I'm going to use is, send is my service host prerequisites. So I need this particular one, 2.10.1. See here, service host prereq, 2.10.1. Okay. And I'm going to send this one to, again, my one test workstation. So I have that now. And last but not least, service host itself. So the one that I want is service host. 2.10.1.5 so this is version 2.10 major release 1 hotfix 5 that's how we read this whole version here so we're gonna look for that now service host 2.10.1.5 also sent to my one property okay 
I prefer to add all of the packages here in one piece, in one go, and then click save. So I send all of them. Uh, alternative, you can add them one by one and then hit send, uh, then hit save. So they go one by one. There's one more thing that I want to show you here. We also have an effective from and an effective to time. For example, if you want to send an update overnight, let's say that you are not at the location and you cannot access EMC remotely, you can put an effectivity from here. Let's say that you know for a fact that by 1 a.m. everybody is done on a particular day. Everybody's done with their shift at 1 a.m. So you can click on the little uh, box here and you can tell it, OK, do this download, this installation uh, at this particular date and then at this particular time. Right. We can do that. And then you can also set an effective two. And then this particular effective two is very good to set, for example, for the next day at 7 a.m. So the upgrade will happen sometime between 1 a.m. and 7 a.m. So if it doesn't happen by 7 a.m. for whatever reason, then stop it. So then you don't it doesn't happen automatically in the middle of the day uh, without it go, without you wanting it to happen. So I don't recommend doing upgrades remote like this. I always am on site when I'm doing upgrades and testing because multiple things can go wrong and I, I don't just send them and leave them because, uh, you know, things can go wrong. So now that I added all my Cal packages, the newer versions that I needed, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click save here in my EMC and we'll take a look at the client and see what's going to happen. But once I save all my packages, we should see the client application loader uh, pop up automatically, see that we have all of these new packages that it needs to download and it's going to start downloading them. Uh, if you are downloading from an enterprise, depending on your internet connection, this upgrade can take anything from a couple of minutes to even an hour or so. So be very careful when you do these kind of upgrades. Uh, that's why I always said do one as a test first and then do it, uh, you know, for real. So you would know how long it takes. If you encounter any issues and if anything happened, you can just revert on that workstation and everything will work fine. So there goes Cal right now. It started to download all of my files and the workstation will go through a series of reboots. Okay, so about eight restarts and 45 minutes later, um, our workstation came back up and we can check our new version. So I'm going to do the same thing. 999. Clear, clear, clear. So now we can see our new version is 2.10.1. Five. So basically the version is 2.10, major release 1, hotfix 5. So we can now see that our upgrade is successful. We will go ahead and test all of our functions and make sure everything is still working, like the credit cards, the gift cards, um, everything else like that, the cash, making sure all our applications are in place and working well. So I'm going to repeat myself with this one because it's very, very important. Be very, very careful what you do here in Cal packages because you can affect your entire enterprise if you don't know what you're doing. If you have multiple properties and send a Cal package to the enterprise level, uh, you're going to have all of the computers in your enterprise, in all of your properties, they're going to download that, that Cal package and most likely they're going to reboot as well. And never ever do this in the middle of operations. We're always going to do it on one workstation. We're going to try it out, see how the upgrade goes, make sure everything still works smoothly after the upgrade. All of our functionality, all of our payment tenders, all of our credit card tenders, everything else, the, the gift cards, everything else still working. And when we are convinced that everything is good, then we will upgrade the entire property. If you are interested in more Symfony tutorials, we have created an entire course where you can learn everything you need to maintain your Oracle Micros POS system. And as a special thank you, I also included a coupon code for you. You can find all the details in the description below. Leave a like if you found this helpful and thanks for watching.